We're going to explore one idea of one of the great chidushim of the Alter Rebbe in Tanya, known as the Sugya of the Benini. Now, I say the word chidush with caution. Because the name of the Tanya is not really Tanya. The name that the Alter Rebbe gave his Sefer is Lekutei Amore. Lekutei Amore means a compilation of sayings, of ideas. In his Shar Blat he writes, Malukut mipi svarim o mipi seifrim. But, nonetheless, the Alter Rebbe attributes it all to a Likut. He's simply compiling sources. But uh, the way the Alter Rebbe compiled it, and the way he applied the sources, and the depth that he showed in the sources, really turns the Tanya into one of the greatest works of Chidush in the history of Yiddishkeit, but like all of Chidush, not a Chidush in the sense that it's something new, which was not taught before, but rather showing what is embedded in the depth of all the material and resources of Yadus, beginning from the Tanakh, throughout Mishneh, Gemara, Medrashim, Kabbalah, and bringing it to light in the way that the Alter Rebbe did. And certainly, one of these ideas is the Benini, because the second name for the Sefer is Lekutei Amarim, and then Sefer Shal Benin. Now, the Sugya of the Benini is really one that pervades all of the 53 chapters of Tanya, because that's the name of the Sefer, Sefer Shal Benenim. But we're going to explore one, I think, central point. One of the greatest frustrations that every serious person and every serious Jew from the beginning of time experienced, and one that certainly many of the people who came to the Alter Rebbe, many of the Hasidim who came to the Alter Rebbe, many of the Jews who came to the Alter Rebbe, discussed and lamented, Something that Rebbe discusses in the Tanya and in many of his Maimorim, famous would be Lakuta Torah Parshas Vayikra and other sources, was the concept that people feel, felt, like they still feel, that after all their work, after all their changes, after all their toil, all their sweat, all their tears, all their Avodas Hashem, fundamentally, they did not change. At a most basic level, they really did not change. There is the famous story about a Jew who came to one of the tzaddikim. There's different versions. I read it on Rebsim Chabinim of Pshischa, one of the great Polish tzaddikim. He wanted to have Gilu Eliyahu. He wanted to see Eliyahu on Novi. And he found in Svarim that the way to see Eliyahu on Novi is you have to fast for many, many days and many, many weeks. Forty days you have to fast and eat only at night. And then you have to sigufim, you have to mortify your body, and there's what's called Gilgul Shalad, you roll in the snow. And after you refine yourself to the point that you lose a sense of materialism, then you like to Gilgul And he did everything, and he was waiting the night afterwards to see Eliyahu Anavi. And uh, he did not see Eliyahu Anavi. So he came back to his Rebbe, and he was crying and lamenting. So he went out to the porch, and he showed him in the stable, in the stable, there was an animal. It's called in Yiddish Afer, the horse. And he says, Give a cook. This horse yeah, also only eats at night, not only 40 days, but sometimes many years. And the horse is also outside in the snow, and the horse also rolls in the snow. And the horse doesn't wear clothes when it rolls. I mean, Mamish, tiniest, and so good, but he never has Gilelio. You know why? Well, there's a fed. Well, there's a fed. He's a horse. You can't expect him to have Gilelio. It's a story that captures the human condition. And it's extremely frustrating. Now, every concept, every dilemma we also have in our own lives. We have a lot of yeshiva bochim. So this is something that really applies to young people because often older people stop trying. They become cynical. Younger people are idealistic. That's the beauty of youth. And sometimes when you're very idealistic, you say, you know what, I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to change myself. I'll transform myself. I'm going to become something. 
especially when you read stories, articles, svarim, you read about people, great people, great giants, and you tell yourself, Mosai Agiyu Maisai, Lamaisai Avram Yitzhak V'yakov, even if not Avram, the Chazal say, even if not Avram Yitzhak V'yakov, at least, Mosai Agiyu Maisai, to some of the great personalities that I read about. And you often feel that you made a change, perhaps, but then a few days pass. I'm being kind, a few hours pass. Sometimes maybe a few weeks pass. Sometimes you go through something in life and you realize as uh, the fair is given a fair, or as the Ebenezer writes in Parshas Vayetze uh, um, about uh, one of the Mepharshim who's called uh, the Ben Ephraim. And he says uh, he should have taken out the Aleph of his name. It's the Ebenezer's expression. And sometimes you look at yourself and you say that that's really what I am. And it's an extremely frustrating concept. All the books of Musa, all the Sifre Musa before Tanya, and we're talking about Svarim that were written by Kdoi Sheyalyan, Sifre Hayira, all the Sifre Musa, books of ethics, books of Avodah Hashem, they tell a Jew that your role in life is to transcend your Yetzir Hara, to become an Oyved Hashem, to cleanse yourself from negative middays, to become a person who feels and is close to Ruchnius, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And all the Swarim, what Shuv is, and what cleansing is, and what transformation is, and different Eitzes. And serious Jews read them and took them seriously, and sometimes worked very hard for many years, and at the end of everything, they felt fundamentally, fundamentally, they did not change. In the famous depiction of the Baal Shem Tev, he once, Friday night, was sitting with his Talmidim, the Hevraya Kaddisha, the Holy Talmidim. In the middle of the meal, the Baal Shem Tev had them close their eyes and put their hands on each other. And thus, there was a link connecting all the Talmidim to the Baal Shem Tev, who was sitting at the head of the table. And he put both of his holy hands mm. on the students sitting near him and sang a nigin. And suddenly, they saw a vision of an ox in a streimel, meaning an ox, a bull, with a streimel on it, eating, and eating with a lot of gusto, with a lot of passion. And the Baal Shem Tev said that this is a Jew, a fine Jew, who's eating a Shabbos meal, but he's so in love with the food that he actually became the piece of ox that he's eating. He's so impassionate about the food that he became the ox. The only part of him that didn't become an ox is the streimel. Because since it's a garment of Shabbos, that, that remained holy, that remained in the tzir, in the form of a streimel. But the rest became an ox. The Degel Machene Ephraim was a grandson of the Baal Shem Tev. He has a say for Degel Machene Ephraim. And in Parsha Shmois, he writes that the vision of Moshe Rabbeinu by the burning bush, by the Sne. So we know that the Sne was a thorn bush. And he sees, Vihine hasne boyer ba'ej, v'hasne nenu ukol. The burning bush is a flame, but it's not being consumed. So there's a fire, but the fire cannot capture and overwhelm the tree. So the Dagel Machna Ephraim explains it all. That what Moshe Rabbeinu saw is that Jews throughout the generations will light a fire, and the fire will be burning, and yet the thorns will never ever be consumed. In the middle of a davening, Suddenly, from left field or right field, the most perverse machshava zara alien thought could come into him. At a happiest moment in life, sometimes a feeling, an emotion comes in that is so, is so inappropriate for the occasion. At the highest moments, in Kippur, other moments, a person feels finally there's a moment of purity, there's a moment of godliness, there's a moment of vacus, and suddenly the thorns are there, strong. Powerful, and no fire can consume it. And for a serious Oyved Hashem, for somebody who takes it seriously, for somebody who really wants to grow, and Al Rebbe was talking to sincere people. Tanya was written for sincere people. This was one of the most frustrating realities. And here we come to one of the great ideas of the Tanya. And one of the most important central ideas of the Alter Rebbe in Tanya that speaks to us till today as it spoke to hundreds of thousands of Jews 
throughout the last 200 years, or millions of Jews throughout the last 100 years, and brought healing and comfort and chizuk and inspiration to scores of Jews and scores of human beings. And I selected a few lines of the Tanya that would illustrate the three major points of many other points that we're going to address of what al Rebbe teaches us about this very dilemma and this very concept. The first is Tanya Perik Yudalit. Tanya Perik Yudalit. The Alter Rebbe begins, and you know when you learn the Tanya, it's easy just to read through these words mm-hmm. and maybe see the English translation and not appreciate what lay in these words. The Bainini is the attribute that belongs to every person. And this is what a person should strive for. For every person can be a Bainini at any moment. Why? Because a Bainini is not somebody who's repulsed, who's disgusted by Ra, by things that are unholy, ungodly, by anything, any reality, any thought, any word, and action that is not one with Hashem, which is the definition of Ra in Tanya. Ra in Tanya is not evil. I know in the English translations we always say Ra is evil. But evil, in our minds, what is evil, right? Evil is a mass murderer, the guy who went into Newtown and massacred a class of children, Achman al That's called an evil act. In, in Tanya, you have to go to a much higher and more refined level. The definition of Toi Ra in Tanya is something that reflects that everything is connected to Hashem. And Ra is something that doesn't recognize its oneness with Hashem. It lives in its own self-contained bubble, divorced from the unity, the holiness, the goodness of Hashem. The Bainani is not somebody who's disgusted with everything that's ungodly. Why? This is something that's very deep in the heart. He can't control it. Not all times are the same. Sometimes he has a moment when he's mayiz birah, when he feels a geshmak for godliness and the lack of geshmak for anything else, and sometimes not. What is a Bainani? A Lesur Mei Rav HaSei Toiv Dahainu B'Poyol Mamesh B'Maisi Dibur HaMachshava Shabahem HaPchiru V'Yechelez V'Rishus Nesunu L'Chaladam Lasses V'Ladabar B'Lachshav Gamma Shol Neged Tai V'Sli Be V'Havcha Mamesh Rather the Bainani, the Sefer Shol Bainani, unlike the Tzadik. You all know the distinction made in time between the Tzadik and the Bainani? The Tzadik is somebody whose heart is transformed and he gravitates emotionally only to Toiv, only to a relationship with Hashem and something that's not godly is repulsive for him. He doesn't even, it's not a struggle. I don't think most of us struggle, even if you're hungry, you don't have a craving to eat glass. There are people who have an illness and they eat glass. But most of us don't have a struggle. Or maybe to give another example, uh, another example, even if you're very, very hungry, you don't have to say, you know, I'm very hungry, but despite the fact that I have a craving, I'm not going to eat fertilizer. We don't struggle with the issue of not eating fertilizer because it's repulsive to us piece of cheesecake is already a little different. The tzaddik, cheesecake, if it's not godly, if it's not for a godly purpose, is fertilizer. But that's not the bainini. The bainini is somebody who's dichotomized. There's a duality in him. He has a godly soul, but he also has an animal soul that sees the world from an animalistic perspective. So the bainini is somebody who has self-control over his life, what he does, what he speaks, what he actively thinks, but not over what he always feels. And right here, the Alter Rebbe already established a major idea in the Tanya Perikid Alat, which he elucidates a few lines later. The Gemara says in Nidid Aflam at the beginning of Tanya that we give every child an oath. When you're in the womb of your mother, you should be a Tzadik and not be a Rasha. Freg the Alter Rebbe. If you're telling somebody to take an oath to be a tzaddik, obviously they won't be a rasha. The answer is, Because we say to eat tzaddik, but we know that not every person has the choice to be a tzaddik. At least it's not a path for everybody that's easily attainable or even attainable at all to really delight in Hashem, to experience Hashem as the pleasure of life 
and therefore be disgusted by that which is disconnected from Hashem. So we say, Tehi Tzadik, Va'al Tehi Rasha. There are two paths. There are two paths. There are the Jews that are capable of becoming Tzadikim. These are people who are capable of becoming, so to speak, like superhuman beings, supermen. To the point that they really, they really reach a point where they are experiencing life from the perspective of the Nefesh Alikis. And even their animal soul is one that has been educated and elevated. Whatever they do when they meet people, when they eat, when they drink, when they sleep, their life is redefined from the perspective of the Nefesh Alikis. But not everybody can attain that. And the Alter Rebbe was telling Jews, you can't. You're coming and you're saying you're frustrated. I'm not a malach. I'm not a tzaddik. And I want to tell you something. You can't. You may work your whole life and you will never be able to attain it. It's not part of the potential. As he explains when Iyav says, the Gemara says in Baba Bas in the first Perik, Iyav says, Barasa tzaddikim, barasa rishayim. So Perik Aleph of Tanya asks, you created tzaddikim? Hashem doesn't create tzaddikim. Tzaddik virasha Loika Amar, the Gemara says in Nida, Shem doesn't decide if you're going to be it. You decide. The famous Rambam and Hilchis Truva Perik, everyone that decides their own life. The answer is, Barasa Tzadikim is, you created certain souls, certain people that they can become Tzadikim. And certain people can't become Tzadikim. They can try. At the end of Perik Yudalad, he discusses that. They have to try. But you have to know that you cannot. I think in mathematics, Rabbi Shachid, you'll correct me, there's a line that's called sympatut. It never touches, it goes and goes and goes and goes infinitely, it never touches the curve. It never, there's, there's such a concept. It goes and it gets closer and closer, but it never touches it. In Kabbalah, we have a concept called mati v'loi mati. You arrive, but you never arrive. You arrive and you pull back. You arrive and you pull back. And that's the life of the Benini. He arrives, he arrives, he has great moments of ecstasy, of oneness, and then suddenly he hits a brick wall. And he wants to transcend it, and the Rebbe says, Tehi Tzadik for some, you, Al Tehi Rasha. This is the famous story of Shmuel Munkis, one of the great Hasidim of the Alter Rebbe, comes into the Alter Rebbe, comes one night, and this is the first time he meets the Alter Rebbe, he was one of the greatest of the great, and Rishmol Munkis is in Liyajna, and it's late at night, and he needs a place to stay, and he suspects that the, light, the house with some light is the Alter Rebbe's house, and he comes to the house, and he knocks on the door, and the Alter Rebbe was up, it's the middle of the night, and the Alter Rebbe asks him how he can help him, and he says, uh, he says, I came here, I want to be here, I want to see you. The Alter Rebbe says, Simit Nacht, it's the middle of the night. So Rabbi Shmuel says, I did not know that by a Rebbe there is night. And the Alter Rebbe says, there's no other house, there's no other place you can stay in. You have to go to the Alter Rebbe's house. He has to become your Meshamash. Rabbi Shmuel Mukha says, I want to stay here. I want to be here. And after a conversation that goes back and forth, the Alter Rebbe says, I'm going to call my goy that I have here to expel you from here. So Reb Shmuel Munke says, Rebbe, my goy is starker than the other goy. My little, my inner goy is a lot more powerful than your goy if they compete against each other. And that was the moment that Reb Shmuel Munke became the Alter Rebbe's person, the Alter Rebbe's chassid, and he took him into the house. Now, there's a whole depth to the story that was explained in one of the sikhs. But what I want to bring out is, that the Tanya teaches that the goy, the inner goy, is zeyeh stark. It's very powerful. So the first foundation the Benini has to know, he may work his entire life, and ultimately there's a part of him that remains animalistic, that remains beastly, that remains earthly, that does not see the world and experience the world and life from a place of the nefesh ali kiss, which is a chelik al kamimal, which sees the world from a godly place, and that's part of his reality. Fine, but where does that leave us? That makes us even more frustrated. <laughs> imagine, imagine, you train for a certain position for 40, 50, 60 years, and after 60 years, the trainer tells you, I have news for you. And the news is, it's not for you. 
Where does that leave us? So I'm learning Perik Yidal. You can't. Okay. There was once in London a group of, uh, of shluchim who made a conference and they had Rabbi Gutnik from Australia, Rabbi Chaim Gutnik, all of our shalom from Melbourne. He was a great orator. Rabbi Shapiro said every few minutes, you need a milsa de bedichas. So Rabbi Gutnik was asked to speak and teach them how to speak, how to give a speech. He was a great communicator. Teach the shluchim, the rabbis, how to communicate. So somebody who was there told me, Rabbi Gutnik, all of our shalom, gets up. And he says, the thing about public speaking is, either you have it or you don't have it. And he went and he sat down. Okay, I guess he was, uh, he was trying to be very honest with them. So where does that leave us? That leaves us, you can't. Comes now, chapter 27. From Yudalit, you go to Chavzayin. And the Perik Chavzayin, Al-Tirebbe reveals to us a new insight, step two in this composition. Take a look in Chavzayim. Valkain yeira levavay al Valkain, al yeira levavay. Valkain, you see what happens from a mistake. Valkain al yeira levavay al she'en me b'madreig es tzadik shal tzadikim b'vade e'en noiflum le'am irure shtus ke'elu. Don't get depressed that you're not a tzaddik because tzaddikim don't have to deal with all of these insane and ugly and promiscuous thoughts which the Alter Rebbe discusses earlier in Chavzayim about that a person sometimes has thoughts that are sometimes permissible and sometimes forbidden in Yonei Niyo things that are very immodest, very promiscuous and sometimes very grotesque really, really unrefined of the worst degree thoughts they fall into a person's mind and he feels depressed. Why? Why am I having this? Why am I struggling with this? Don't get depressed so much. Why? If you would know the truth, you're not a tzaddik. You're far from a tzaddik. Halavai, you could be a benini. This is your shlichus. This is your mission. This is what the Rebbeinu Shalala wants from you. Not to win, but to battle. Not to lose, but not to win. And he adds, Ubechold, Chiyud, Chiyud, Shabbat, Chayim, and Machshavta. Iskaf, Yisit, Racher, Elisata. Ubechold, Elisata, Yisit, Racher, Elisata. And you should know that every single time a thought, an unhealthy, a negative, an immoral thought comes into you, and you dismiss it, and you reject it, and you fight that war every single time you do it. You should know that the whole power plant of Sitra Acher in the world gets shattered, gets subdued, down here and up there. You should understand, The Zoya says the tremendous pleasure Hashem has every time you have a struggle and you subdue something ungodly, something negative in your mind, or that you want to speak, or that you want to do, something you have to do that you don't do, so, something that you want to do that you don't do, something that you don't want to do and you do, you should understand that it reverberates in all the worlds, and the whole power plant of Sitra Akhira. We spoke before that a person, in the Hashkafa of Chassidus especially, especially in the Alter Rebbe's Chassidus, a Jew is at the center of the world. The center. And every tenuah of a Jew reverberates, Yaakov Chavon Achalasi, like a rope. The rope goes from the highest to the lowest. You pull the rope, and it has a ripple effect to the highest point and to the lowest point. So every time you experience something internally, and you serve Hashem, it has a cosmic effect, as he says, Sitra Achira. The whole energy of Klippa, the whole energy of ungodliness in all of the worlds are affected by this. They are subdued, they are broken, they are shattered. So if it's 40 times a day, I hope not, but if it's 40 times a day, so imagine the opportunity that you're given here. And therefore, do not get depressed, do not get dejected. Even if your whole life you have to fight, because maybe you were created for this. Maybe this is why you were created. Here is step two. It's not just you can't. You don't have to. It's not what Hashem wanted from you. He doesn't want you to be an angel. 
He wanted you to be on the front lines of the battle between light and darkness, the battle between superficiality and depth, the battle between truth and falsehood. You're in the front lines, and yes, the front lines of war are bloody. The front lines of war are violent. The front lines of war are not clean because you're dealing with darkness and you were put there to fight. He does say, I should say that. He doesn't say, don't feel bad at all. A little bit you should feel bad. Because if you don't feel bad at all, you know what can happen. Suddenly you can surrender and capitulate and say, you know, it's fine. Part of fighting is that you're frustrated. If there's no frustration at all, you can lose. But don't turn into a depressed person from this because you're a failure. You're not a failure. Your job is not to win, but to fight. So that's not a failure. That's called success. So he redefined what success in Avedis Hashem is. Often we think, what success in Avedis Hashem? I get rid of the problem. I get rid of the challenge. I'm pure. I'm clean. I'm a part of heaven. No, that's not success. For you, that might be failure. But that's not what Hashem wants from you. How much healing did this bring to countless Jews who could not become Allah, who could not become Tzaddikim? They often read Svarim of Musa, and they saw about the need to become perfectly righteous in the eyes of Hashem. So the few that could do it, did it. And the rest who can't, one of two things happened. Either they give up on themselves. They say, this is not for me, this is not real. This is for high people. I'm a real person. I'm not going to live my whole life making believe I'm holy. So you become what's called cynical. It happens constantly to us. You give up. You know, this is for the Reb Hillel of the world in the Chabad history. These are for the Reb These people, but I am I. I'm a real guy. I'm a man of the world. I'm not a man of heaven. Maybe next Gilgal. That's one approach. Another approach, maybe even sadder, is people become unhealthy. They become unreal. They start faking. They become delusional. They, they start believing things about themselves that they're not. You can't talk to them anymore. They're not in touch with themselves as real people because they want to become what it says in the Svarim, but they're not, so they make believe they are. And one of the worst things in life is when you're living a life which you're really not, you, you can't be normal with people. You can't be open. You can't be open to yourself. It's a terrible, terrible way of living. It's also very unhealthy on every level. The revolution of the Tanya was the Alter Rebbe was the one who opened the door for real people living in the real world to become Oivdei Hashem Be'emes. But what's Pshat Oivdei Hashem Be'emes? What's Pshat success in Avodah Hashem? Not full transformation and cleansing. If you can, yes. And those areas that you can, yes. But it's the constant awareness of what is the truth and the battle for that truth. Which now brings us to step number three. But what's the point? Why would I send soldiers to the battlefield not to win? Imagine a commander-in-chief telling his troops, go and fight for 90 years, or 120 years, or 180 years, Be'ezer Hashem. And let me tell you the objective. The objective is not to win, just to fight. Sounds like Vietnam? which was not very dandy. Why would you do that? I can understand I send the neshama down to win, but I have to give you the weapons. One of the tragedies in the Second Lebanon War in Israel is they said that they sent out the soldiers without the proper equipment, without the proper gear. It's one of the greatest tragedies. You send somebody to a war and you don't allow them to win. You're sending them to a war, you're not allowing them to win. And you tell them you have to fight and that's what I want. And this is the great question that Rebbe raises in Peter Klamed Hey. So we went from Yudala to Chavzayin to Lamed Hay. And in Lamed Hay he says, we have to comfort the bain, comfort the Bainanim Keflaim Lutashio, Tihizais Nachemasam. I have we have to comfort them. The fact that a whole life sometimes he fights and fights and ultimately he never becomes a tzaddik. And here the Alter Rebbe introduces one more third idea, and that's in Perik Lamed Vov. So in Perik Yudalad he said. You can't. In Perik Chavzayin, he said, you don't have to. Perik Yudalad, he said, not everybody can. Some people cannot reach the angel tzaddik model. Perik Chavzayin, he says, you don't have to. It's not what Hashem wants from you, perhaps. As he says in Chavzayin, Aseli Matamim. Yitzchak Avinu says, I want two dishes. 
So it says in Zohar, Tikkuni Zohar, Hashem tells the Jews, I want two types of dishes. I want two types of meals. One type of meal is what? A sweet, geshmake, delicious meal. That's the meal of the tzaddik. The second meal is made up of spicy, sour, tarty foods that if you would eat them on their own, imagine somebody said, what do you eat for breakfast today? I had salt and black pepper and garlic. That's not called a breakfast. But you have a salad and you put in a little salt. You have a salad, you put in a little pepper, and suddenly the very spice is converted into a gourmet dish. It says, matamim, The tzaddik gives delicious food to Hashem. The Benini, what does he bring to Hashem? He brings to Hashem his darkness. But the darkness becomes part of a battle. The darkness becomes part of a catalyst to serve Hashem. And that's the second matam, that's Chavzai. Now we come to step three, Lamed Vav. What would be the purpose? Now here we get into a, one of the nuclear, I would say, nuclear sugis of Chassidus Chabad, known as the sugi of Dira B'tachtoinim. But the core of all the discourses on Dira B'tachtoinim is chapter 36 of Tanya. I'm not sure there's a single sikha of the Rebbe in which it says the words Dira B'tachtoinim with a footnote, and in the footnote you won't see the words Tanya, Perik, Lamed Vav. Of course, first you'll see Medrash Tanchuma, Parshas Nosai, because that's the source of the Tanya. But the Alter Rebbe, I don't mean this literally, the Alter Rebbe found the Maimah Chazal in Medrash Tanchuma Nosai. He found the Maimah Chazal, and this Maimah Chazal, Nesava Kodesh Baruch Holiyus Leidir B'Tachtoinim. It's not a Gemara in the, the beginning of Mesech De Brachis, or a clear Gemara in Baba Basra, Sanhedrin. It's a Medrash in Parshas Nosai. And the Alter Rebbe extracted the Medrash, and in Perik Lamed Vav, he begins, Everybody knows, everybody knows, the Maimah Chazal, that Hashem wanted to have a home in this world, and he explains, what does it mean, Tachtoinim, lower worlds? What Hashem is only on a higher floor, this is a lower world, what does it mean? So Dr. Rebbe explains lower means that there's different layers of reality. When we talk about worlds in Chassidus and Kabbalah, it doesn't mean that uh, you take a spaceship and you fly uh, 50 uh, million light years away and you'll crash into Yitzira and then you'll fly another thousand light years away you'll crash into Bria and then you'll fly a zillion light years away and you'll bump into Atzillus and then you'll make a super duper looper and you'll hit Olam Hanakudim and then Olam Hanakudim and then you'll fly before the Tzimtzum and you'll hit Oyrin Sof Shalifna Tzimtzum and you'll melt away we once learned Chassidus by Rabbi El Khan so he said that somebody somebody once asked a, he was asking questions so he turned to one of the Bachim and he says, Zagme, in welche Jahrhundert is the Tzimtzum Geshen? Tell me, in which cent- century did the Tzimtzum Arishim happen? Was it in the 1500s or the, or the, you know, the 1100s? When we talk about all the worlds in Chassidus, and this is fundamental to understand when you learn Chassidus, the worlds are not out there. They're mm. right here. When you talk about different worlds, it means different perspectives to the same reality. I could take a look at this watch and see it from a perspective of Asiya, Yitzira, Bria, Atzillus. The same world, the same apple, the same piece of food, the same brick, the same person. I could look at him or her from a perspective of Asiya. I could put on glasses that have a prescription that say on it, Yitzira, Bria, Atzillus. In other words, it's looking at the same reality, but what do you see in it? I read musical notes, and you know what I see? What do you see when you read musical notes? I see a lot of lines. And if I would look at it for too long, I'm probably going to get a headache. But when a musician looks at the same lines, what does he see? Suddenly he's smiling, he's glowing, he's hearing music, he already starts singing to himself. The same lines, but what did he see? He saw in the same lines a reflection of something higher, a reflection of music. And the same is true with every reality in the world. So when you talk about different worlds, it means different layers in which Hashem's presence is more concealed and less concealed. So Nisava Kadosh Baruch Hu means that he wanted to have a home where in the lowest level of reality, he says the lowest of the low, because in this world Hashem's light is concealed in a way that is the most extreme, completely 
the darkness is doubled and redoubled to the point that there's no recognition of Hashem. In fact, as he says, you could walk around your whole life and be an atheist and say, I am here, there's nothing outside of me and my ego and my, my presence. This is Tachtoinim. Now we define what Tachtoinim is. But now, the Alter Rebbe adds, Vihine, Vihine, Tachlis Yishtal Shalos HaOlem is Vihiri Dasar Madrege La Madrege, Eino Bishvil Olem is Hal Yoinim. The objective of Hashem making all the worlds and the whole evolution, Hishtal Shalos means evolution, going down from level to level was not for the higher spiritual worlds. Hoyil, Velahem Yeridim Eir Panav Yisbarach. Because in all of them, there is a yiride, there is a descent of Hashem's inner light. For them, there is only yiride from Hashem's light. So why would, the Alter Rebbe is saying something, why would the objective be the higher worlds when the higher worlds are yiride, they are degradation of Hashem's light. So now we want to see, what is this conclusion? Ela, hatachlesu, oilam haza hatachten. The objective is this lowly world. Whoa, you're reading. Oh, this world is not a Yeridim Meir Padaf? You're telling me that the objective is not Olam Asal Yainim? Because they're all Yeridim. They're all lower than Hashem's light. They're high, they're lofty, they're sublime, but they're a Yeridim. Oh, and Olam Hazat, you just told me a few lines before that this world is the worst of the worst. Tachten She'ein, Tachten Lamatim Emenu. You know, you could say about somebody, he's not so good. You could say Ken sein Besser. I never heard anybody, any Rosh Hashiva say about a Bach, a Ken sein Erger. They say the difference between an optimist and a pessimist is, right? An optimist says the situation could get worse, and a pessimist says it can't get any worse. This can't get worse. It's the lowest possible world that there is. That's what you told me. The is A few lines later, the Alter Rebbe suddenly changes the music. So the Tachlis is not Olam Esal Yainim because they're all a Yerida. They're all, they're all a compromise. They're a dilution. They dilute Hashem's light. The Tachlis is Olam Hazat Tachta. And he adds, Shekach Allah Beritzayna Yisbarach. This is what he desired. Leo Esnach Hasruach Lefon of Yisbarach. He desired there should be a pleasure for him. Kadeskaf Yisitra Achira. When unholiness is subdued, darkness is transformed into light. Translate. He wanted, it should be a nachas ruach, that the darkness of this world should be transformed into light, and Hashem's presence will be present and revealed in this world more than in the higher worlds, because in the higher worlds, He shines through garments, so they shouldn't be nullified. But in this world, from the darkness, there's going to be a light that doesn't exist in the higher worlds. What is the Alter Rebbe telling us here? What is the Alter Rebbe telling us here? I don't know if you know, the first maimah that the Rebbe said, ever, Yud Shva Tavshin Yud Aleph, I think some of you were here, right? <laughs> we have the Zisman brothers, so they were there, Yud Shva Tavshin Yud Aleph. I was together with you in Machshava Hagduma, the Adam Kadman. Hopefully, Machshava Hagduma, the Adam Kadman. But the Rebbe says you have to look at a Jew, Machshava Hagduma, the Adam Kadman. The first Fabreng, the Rebbe said his first moment, one year after the, the passing, the Istalkus of the Rebbe Dayats. So the first Basi Lagani Tavshin Yud Aleph, a major section of the Maimer was dedicated to explain these few lines in Tanya. But I want to, there he goes a step deeper, I want to discuss literal pshat, the blatant contradiction, as I said. First you tell me, this is the lowest world, and then you tell me, the pshat is, and I want you to understand this very well, because it's literally one of the most fundamental ideas of many, many, but one of a very fundamental idea of Chassidus Chabad, of Dr. Rebbe's Chassidus, as follows. What are Olam Eshel Yoinim? Olam Eshel Yoinim are holy worlds. They're worlds in which everything perceives Hashem's reality clearly. You talk about Olam HaTzilis, even Olam HaBriya, even Olam HaYitzira. These are worlds, they're not even tangible, they're not, there's no physicality in those worlds. When you have the glasses of Olam HaYitzira, of Olam HaBriya, never mind of Olam HaTzilis, you see everything in a different way, you see it from a divine perspective. These are godly worlds, the Neshamas that are in those worlds, the Malachim, 
the heichalas, the chambers, the realities, and really, all the creatures that are here in this world are there also in those worlds. Because everything in this world is a hishtalshalus, it's an evolution from the higher worlds. That's why in Kabbalah and Chesedis you'll see sheleg, snow, is keser. Mayim is chesed, Eish is gvura, tapuach is malchus, levana is malchus. What does this mean? Thighs, the two thighs are netzach the right arm is chesed, the left arm is gvura. What does that mean? It means that the apple down here or the moon that we see or, or, or a piece of earth that you see, it doesn't begin in this world. It begins in Atsilis. But in Atsilis, you don't have a physical apple. You have the concept, the energy of divine malchus. And then it evolves and in every world it becomes more concrete and more, uh, more um, tangible until it assumes physical properties that we relate to in our five senses. So the Olam Masal Yoinen are spiritual they're godly. They're alyonim. There's no sin. There's no transgression. There's a recognition of Hashem. And yet, they are all a yirid. Because the way it was before creation was much greater. Hashem was himself. Einoid mulvadoi. Even Hashem's light, Hashem's presence, was in full presence without anything else. Now there's a world of Atzillus, a world of Bria, a world of Yitzira. Of course they're filled with Hashem's light. But in order for there to be souls, angels, chambers, realities, spiritual realities, Hashem has to conceal His light. So what would be the objective, the Alter Rebbe says, of taking Hashem's presence, which is all-pervasive, which is everything, Einoid Malvadi, there's nothing outside of Him, and creating a holy world in which you recognize Hashem, but the very fact that there's a you to recognize Hashem means that Hashem is somewhat concealed there. So it would be like you have a product that is extraordinary, extraordinarily powerful. And then what you do is you downgrade, you downgrade if you want to talk economically. You have an unbelievably successful company. It's generating tremendous amount of revenues. The success story is extraordinary. And then you dumb it down, you downgrade it, you make it weaker, you make it more diluted, and you're less, what's the objective? You have the same thing you had before, but much weaker. This is a very poor metaphor, because what we're talking about here is, before the world, you have Hashem's presence, in its full presence, whatever that is. I'm from Asiyas, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is. And then, Hashem creates what? Worlds. And you say, what's the tachlis? Tachlis is, get out of here, go to Elam Haba, and what are you going to have there? You're going to have there a downgraded form of godly energy. Before the world, when we were all included in Hashem, you had much more of Hashem, much more intimate, much more real. You had the essence itself. Why would He give us a little trickle, a little glimmer of light? And that was the whole objective. Before creation, you had everything. And now after creation, we'll work through. We'll get to Elam Haba. What are we going to have? We're going to have 1% of what we had, and it's not really even 1%. It's infinitely, infinitely inferior to what we had. What would be the objective? What you had before creation, you have after creation. The only thing is, dumbed down in an infinite fashion. From this, Dal Rebbe proves that the tachlis is Olam Hazah HaTachten. Why? There's no Yerida here of Hashem's Eir. Of course there's a Yerida of Hashem's Eir, but there's something else. This world is the only new thing that exists post-creation. Olam Hazah Yoinim are all godliness. But it's godliness compromised, diluted. So if you have Hashem himself before creation, why create a diluted experience of godliness? You have the etzem. They say a story, I mean, I don't know the authenticity of the story today. There's a lots, of, lots of people say lots of stories. But it's certainly a geshmaka story. That there was once a satmir al-chassid from Williamsburg who went to fix something, to repair something in the Rebbe's house on President Street. A repair job. And uh, he finished the, rep- the, the, the work. And he was about to go out of the house. And uh, he asked Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, he said, I want to ask you something. Is this a Lubavitcher house? Is this a Chabad house? Because everyone here seems to be Lubavitchers in Kranah. He says, yeah, why, I mean, why do you ask? He says, the only house in this neighborhood that doesn't have a picture of the Rebbe on the wall. <laughs> Are you Lubavitch, you know? So to speak, you know, maybe you belong in Williamsburg. You know, what are you doing here? Well, he didn't say that, but that was the concept. So the Rebbe told him, 
I have the original. I have the original. I don't need the picture. So you have the original. So you give me now Olam Eshal Yoinim, which is what? A poor picture. Because Olam Eshal Yoinim are all godliness. But what is it? It's a trickle. It's a light. It's a ray. It's a glimmer. You have the sun itself. Instead of giving in, so instead of being on the sun, in the sun, what do you do? Say, you know what? I want to create a world. You know, I want to create a world, so I'm going to give people a little tiny ray of the sun. What's the point? Comes Dal Rebbe and says, there's something else. The only place in which something new was created, not a compromise from a higher level in a lower level. Something new is here. What was created in this world that didn't exist before, I'm asking? What? Choshech. Darkness. The absence of godliness. Sitra Achere. That didn't exist before. Atzilis. Of course you had Atzilis. In Hashem there was no Atzilis. Bria, of course you had. In Hashem there was no Kedusha of Bria. All the world you had in Hashem. And much more, much stronger. So he creates a world and takes us out of his essence. So we should go back and get a little glimmer. In this world, it's not less light. In this world, there's a new reality. The reality is called atheism, agnosticism, darkness, mm -hmm. the absence of any recognition of Hashem. What we call klippe, husks, sitracher, tachten, shein tachten, lamatem amenu. We live in a world in which we feel our egos. We feel our narcissism. We feel unholy. We feel fragmented. There's no unity. We don't feel the presence of Hashem at all. We feel very physical, materialistic, animalistic. Oh, you can tell me that Hashem created the world to do something new. The only place where there's something new is in our world. In the higher worlds, Hashem didn't do something new. He did give us what we had before, but degraded. So why did he do it? What's the purpose? Hatachlesu, in this world, something new emerged that never existed. What is? What is this? Before creation, Enoid Mulvadoi. There was only Hashem. Suddenly now, oh, you come to a world, you don't even know if he exists. You don't feel his existence. That's the whole struggle of life. To find the unity, to find the core, to find the ruchnius, to find the achdus, the unity between us and in the whole world. The whole nekud of Yiddishkeit is what? To discover the soul, the soul in yourself, the soul in the world, the soul in Torah. Hagboras hatsura ala choymer. Yiddishkeit is a daily battle for transcendence. Transcendence of spirit over matter, depth over superficiality, kedusha over cover ups, over klippe. This is a whole new reality. So the Alter Rebbe comes to a conclusion and says the whole objective of the creation of the world was not to connect to light. That's not the objective. To connect to light? You know how much light you had before? The Arizal says, before the world. That's not the objective. You know what the objective is? Not to connect to light. The objective is to confront darkness, to subdue darkness, to transform darkness into light, to stare at the darkness of this world and say, despite the fact that you're completely concealed, I will not fall prey to the husk, to the shell of the banana, to the superficiality. I will dig and dig and find your presence. The Alter Rebbe has a song on the words Achin Ata Kel Mistata. You know the song? And I always wondered, it's a lively melody which doesn't seem appropriate to the words. Achin Ata Ata Kel Mistata. But listen to the words. Indeed, Hashem, you are a concealed God. What is the Simcha? What's the, the elation? The answer is the fact that you know that He's a Kel Mistata that gives you Chizuk. The problem is not that there's a concealment. The problem is, like the Baal Shem Tov says, Vanoichi, haster, haster, that the concealment is concealed. 
The problem is when you think that sheker is emes. The problem is not falsehood. The problem is when you think dishonesty is honesty and darkness is light. The fact that you know it's darkness and you have a job to confront it and not to fall prey to it and not to embrace it. That's what happens in this world. The Alter Rebbe is telling us here the bane and he wonders. A whole life wasted. A whole life in battle. Without victory. What's victory? Victory means fulfilling the objective of creation. What was the objective of creation? The objective of creation was not to generate light. The objective was to transform darkness into light. Because this didn't exist before creation. Before creation, there was no darkness. There was a lot of light. There was Gili Yalakus, and even beyond light. But there was no darkness. So therefore, we don't say the objective is live in this world, fight the Yetzirah, and ultimately you're going to get to Olam Haba. True, Olam Haba is a big part of the picture. But the ultimate tachlis, dira betachtoinim, is when you confront the darkness in yourself and the darkness in the world. Because every single person has this choshech. We all have to deal with this darkness. We all have to deal with the concealment. And every time that you give the finstenish a brach, it's the brach of klippe, it's the crush of klippe, in which you fulfill the ultimate objective of existence. So the benini, as we say in English, may lose the battle but he wins the war. Some people win the battle, but they lose the war, right? Sometimes, especially in marriage, the Bochum don't know about this, you think you win the battle, but you lose the war, you lose the bigger picture. Sometimes you lose the battle, but you won the war. The Benini, you would think, loses the battle, because the next day, the Nefesh Bahamas is back, the enemy emerged again. But he wins the war, the war of creation, the drama of history, of transforming the world. With every moment of his life, the bane in me leads that world towards its place of redemption, as he says in Perik Lamed Zayin, the next chapter, that this is exactly the world of the future, the world of Mashiach, that the earth will be transformed. And when the earth is transformed, Yisrin Ha'arim and Ha'chayshech, then the light that will be present and is present in this world is greater than the light that is present in the highest world. Why that is, it has to do because it's the transformation of darkness into light, and that actually goes into the theme of Basilagani Tavshin Yor Aleph concerning Atmos and Yeshanivrem, it's Yusem Yatzmus, but that's not for now. There's a story, they say, by the Zhlobin Achasana. There was a Chasana between the Alter Rebbe's grandchild and the Badichiva's grandchild, the Holy, the Heleke Badichiva. So they made it in Zhlobin, which I believe is at the center point between Liadi and Bardichiv. So the two sides met together in Zlobin. And, uh, you know, which chassid knows that there's going to be a Shabbos with the Alter Rebbe and a Shabbos with Levitz Badit Shever. So ever, it was a tremendous weekend. And we have a lot of Maimorim in Lekut Torah Parshas Nosei, I believe. It's the Maimorim of Zlobin and Chassana. Hanachas Harap. We have a lot of, we have a few Maimorim that the Alter Rebbe said at that Chassana and lots of stories that came from that wedding. Well, I'll tell you two. One story is that on the way to the chuppah, the chuppah was on Friday, and on the way to the chuppah, they had to go through a door, and the Baditchev and the al Rebbe were walking together, and the door was very narrow. So the Helech Baditchev turned to the al Rebbe, and he showed reverence towards the al Rebbe that he should walk through the door first. So the al Rebbe refused, and he said, you should go first. And they started a debate back and forth. You know, the Baditchev was older, but uh, Baditchever had a tremendous respect and awe for the Alter Rebbe. It's known what he said. I mean, Allah gegessen von ein Teller, but the Litvak, Hatsuganum and the Smetana. You know, we all ate from the same dish, but the Litvak, they called the Alter Rebbe the Litvak because he came from Lita. Um, he took the Smetana, he took the, the cream, you know, the choiciest, the choiciest of the choice, the Shamnunis, uh, the Shamnunis al Gabi Hachalov, the Smetana it's called. So, uh, they're going back and forth. So at some point, the Baditchever, who, as you know, was a tzaddik beyond words, tells the Alter Rebbe, I have, an adv- I have a solution. Only the Baditchever would give the solution. Let's walk through the wall. Let's walk through the wall. And by the way, he meant it. 
If we walk through the wall, this place for you, this place for me. The Alter Rebbe responded. There's a few versions of what the Alter Rebbe responded. They, I think, all capture the same thing. One of the versions I once read or heard was the Alter Rebbe said, Nein. Zol de tir veren breiter. We're not going to walk through the wall. We're going to walk through the door. But let the door expand. A small note, a, a, a seemingly a simple line, but it captures his idea, his shita. Chassidus Chabad did not believe in walking through walls. Walking through walls means you live in a level beyond limitations. The Alter Rebbe said we walk through doors, but the door becomes wider. What the Alter Rebbe was megal with Chassidus Chabad is that teva is l'maylam and teva. That the very world, the very physical and earthly world can become the place where the ultimate essence of godliness can be revealed. Just like he did it intellectually that the Chachma Bina Daz, the human mind, can appreciate godliness. Not only the Neshama, not only faith, but the very human mind, the very world, the very structure of the world. Once heard from Rabbi El-Khan that the Alter Rebbe had a Chassid. And the Alter Rebbe's Chassid, like the Minig of Chassid Chabad, he would go to Shul to Davin, and before Davening, he had to learn Hasidus. He would think and learn and try to inspire himself. And some days it goes and sometimes it doesn't go. Sometimes it penetrates, sometimes it doesn't penetrate. And he became very envious because his neighbor by davening was another Jew who was a Hasid of a Rebbe named Reb Chaikel Amdurer. Amdur is a city. Reb Chaim Chaikel of Amdur was a great tzaddik, a student of the Magid. And he was in the pattern of the Polish Hasidim where the main focus was not learning Hasidus on your own, but the focus was connecting to the words of davening themselves and getting inspired by the words themselves and trying to ignite your amuna, your simple faith in Hashem and the connection to the tzaddik with Alter Rebbe's focus was no, you have to learn and understand and get entrenched in Hasidus and relate to it and work it through and explain it to your animal soul. Now when you have to explain things to your animal soul it can take four hours and sometimes it doesn't help. So he watched this Hasid of Chaim Chaikul coming in every morning, he would come from the mikveh and he was excited and passionate and he would daven with a bren. And he, sometimes he daven taka with, with an inner passion and sometimes he felt that he's not getting anywhere. And he once came to the Alter Rebbe and he started to complain. He says, it's not fear. You know, I'm your man. Here is a chassid of Abchaim Chaikul. And a bren, a bren. He's burning with fire. The Alter Rebbe tzachvat veiket. The Alter Rebbe went into a, uh, a spiritual trance, a meditation for a while and then he came back, he, came, he arose and he said in his nigin, the chassids used the words erbrent, this other person is burning, he's on fire, so the Alter Rebbe said, erbrent, chaikul brent in em, un mir villain, as mezol alein brennen, he's burning, he's on fire, chaikul is burning in him, we want that you should burn on your own, in other words, it was a great level this chassid had. He was connected to his Rebbe, so the fire of his Rebbe was burning in him. It's like you're holding a match by a wick, and the wick is burning. But when you take away the match, the wick is not burning. But you're always connected to the match. The Alter Rebbe wanted that people should burn on their own meaning, that your very human personality, your very animal soul, your own identity, should appreciate the emiss of godliness. This is Chidus Chabad. It has to come into your darkness. Oh, but to get your log to burn on your own, this is not a simple task. And that's why it says in Ramach Oisius, there's an old svart of chesidim, very, very deep. A tzaddik is bli gvul. A benini is gvul. When a rebbe is the chibur from bli gvul mit gvul. A tzaddik is infinity. A tzaddik lives in a world where there's no concealment. A benini is finite. He lives in a world of finiteness. He's trapped by finiteness. He struggles with finiteness. He lives in a world where there's a blocked vision. Two worlds. A tzaddik and a benini. A seli matamim. Barasa tzaddikim. Barasa rishayim. Then there's a rebbe. The rebbe is the one who connects the Bligvul and the Gvul. The Alter Rebbe wrote, Sefer Shal Beninim. The Alter Rebbe saw the world from a tzaddik's perspective. But the Rebbe is a shepherd. So the Rebbe 
addresses the gvul and shows the gvul how it become it can become bli gvul how the ordinary can be extraordinary how the chayshech can be transformed into light. So when they were leaving the zlob and the on the the leaving, so I heard from Rabbi Saul Friedman. Chassidim said, Al Tereba had a coachman a balagola who was leading the horses, but you know. A balagola, a medreitz acharum de malterem far apar yar. Even though he was a coachman, he was a simple man. But sometimes a balagola is around somebody for many years, and uh, and you you know things that other people don't know. Like the famous marshal, there's two types of security guards: the security guards in prison, and the security guards in museums. Security guards in prison, after 30 years, you know their language, you can't really listen to it. The security guards of museums, they had the same education like the other security guards. But their language is a different language. Sophisticated, artistic. So the Alter Rebbe turns to the Balagala and he says, Vazaktir af my mechutin. What do you say about my mechutin? The Alter Rebbe loved the Badit Shiver. He cherished, cher- they loved each other. You know, when he was arrested, he sent a pidyon to whom? To the Badit Shiver. And I remember once Rosh Hashanah, I think it was 1980, Tav in the middle of the Maimah of Rosh Hashanah, mm-hmm. the Rebbe mentioned the Blevitzah Badit and he said like this, Baza HaLosh, Yadu or Mufur Sambachal HaOilam is, as the Blevitzah Badit is on Oyev Yisrael, Rosh Hashanah. It's known in all the world, it's publicized in all the worlds, that the Blevitzah Badit is on Oyev Yisrael. So the Rebbe, with much pride and nachas, he turns to the Balagala and he says, Nu, Vazakst Vega Maimachutn. What do you say about Maimachutn, the Badit so to speak, as you would say, I did a good shidduch, ah, it's a good mechut, and you can't get better. So the Balagola tells the Alter Rebbe, he says, Rebbe, ayer mechutin is pile ployim. Your mechutin is wonder of wonders. Aber a Rebbe v'yaych is nishta. Your mechutin is wonders of wonders. But a Rebbe like you, there's no. The person who revolutionized the landscape of Machsheves Hayadus and showed the Jewish people in the world how the highest of the high and the lowest of the low can be one and integrated and synthesized and empowered every individual that in his or her daily journey in a very dark world can transform and revolutionize the world and touch the deepest truths in the most lowest of places. This was one of the great Yesodis of the Alter Rebbe, which is reflected here, one aspect of it, one aspect of it, in the Benini. V'idach pirushu. The rest is all commentary. Now zilgmoir. Now we have to, in the words of Hillel, now we have to go learn and delve into more and more the teachings of Torah and the teachings of the Alter Rebbe, both in Nigla and in Chassidus, till the point of Mola Ha'aretz Deyes Hashem Kamayim Layam Mechasim. Thank you very much.